Immigration and Trade top successful talks between Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. Government commits to business development to increase economic growth. And Prime Minister urges caution on the nation's roads. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Simone Wolf. Welcome. For most of last week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness hosted Prime Minister Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago with hopes of deepening bilateral relations. Following the four-day official visit, the leaders signed a joint communique outlining plans to strengthen political and bilateral cooperation. Among the matters discussed was the proper functioning of the CARICOM single market and economy and the connecting issues of hassle-free travel as well as the free movement of goods and services between the two countries. As leaders, we agreed to work towards a better and more stable environment for businesses to thrive, to increase investment flows between our countries, and to develop mechanisms to facilitate closer trade cooperation and the resolution of trade issues. Cooperation in security and intelligence sharing, energy, air and sea transportation, tourism, sports and the creative industries were also explored. And Prime Minister Holness accepted an invitation to visit Trinidad and Tobago at the earliest opportunity to continue the bilateral discussions. It is important that the regulatory environment, the government-to-government -government relationship is strong. Once that is strong and you have these close, very close fraternal links in culture, in sports, education, in trade, in finance, then you can see the opportunities for economic growth for both our countries. Prime Minister Holness also attended to other matters last week. On Wednesday, he hosted a delegation from the International Monetary Fund, headed by Deputy Director of the Western Hemisphere Department, Nigel Chalk. The Prime Minister said those talks were positive and fruitful, with the parties agreeing that government's focus on growth and job creation, poverty reduction and national security should be central to any future program with the IMF. Mr. Holness also used the opportunity to thank the IMF for its continued support of Jamaica. At a function on Tuesday, the Prime Minister shared government's plan to promote new businesses and markets for economic growth. That will include using foreign policy to seek out new markets and establish new relationships. Because the truth is that the Jamaican market is limited. For, for our firms to truly grow, we have to treat CARICOM as our market as well. And to use CARICOM as a launching pad for Latin America. Not just North America. We also must now start to see China as a market for Jamaica. All we need is 1% of 1% of the Chinese market. Mr. Holness was speaking at the Innovation Grant from New Ideas to Entrepreneur Ignite presentation put on by the Development Bank of Jamaica. 27 entrepreneurs are being given access to up to $4 million each to help implement innovative ideas and grow their firms. The projects all have the potential to generate over a billion dollars in revenue and create more than 200 jobs. And finally, road safety was also a top priority for the Prime Minister this past week. On Wednesday, Mr. Holness released a video appealing to all road users to exercise caution on the nation's roads. He brought a similar message to the unveiling of Guardian Life's $60 million mobile medical unit on Thursday. Drive with care. Drive with consideration for fellow road users. Jamaica needs you your contribution and your productivity. Your life is in your hands on the roads. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for the major news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister.